seconds. All right, we are got it. We're live. So now this is going to be more fun because now you, you have your camera on, Diggles. So then you know the, the banter before before the show is a little better because everybody can see your beautiful face instead of just being the creep in the corner making jokes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm a real boy. Dad jokes all day long. Uh, <clears throat> Do you, do you have your yeah. your, your G Steve Jobs uh, uh, dress? Got yeah. it. Look, I got it. <laughs> Confirmation. It's like, look at you. Look at your life. Look at your choices. Go on, I man. Said, I said, I, Matthias, I was like, I've had this turtleneck for like two years and I've never worn it. I'm going to wear it on this uh, end of year festive Steve Jobs moment. Uh, <laughs> that is so funny. More like Elizabeth Holmes moment. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah! Oh jeez! <laughs> oh, let's not go there. All right, we will we'll give it a few minutes here as people come in, and then we'll dive in. We've got quite a bit to cover, so I don't want to yeah. lollygag. Um, you know, I, I wonder about like the, the Zoom call. It's like everybody raises their hand and on everything. Is it like, is it kind of like, it's like a, like a wave? Like maybe people are doing the wave or something. I don't know. You ever think about that? So everybody's like raising their hand on Zoom on these calls and, you know, is this not <laughs> resonating with you here? Am I just talking uh, into abyss? I want to do the wave of panelists? Is that what we want to do? I mean, like... <laughs> no, no, the, the button that says wave your hand, like raise your hand, like participants <laughs> raise their hand, it, like goes on the whole thing. I wonder if it's like a meme of itself. Never mind. Never mind. No, no, I, I mean, these screen sharing platforms or what a video casters, they, every one of them is different. They all got their own little thing. Like Teams has a thing called a share tray, a share tray. I mean, what is that? Like it opens up and what you put stuff in it and then it closes and somebody else grabs it. Like I've never, I've had to try to get people to educate me on what the share tray is, um, but still to no avail. Do you ever listen and care? I don't know. Well, no, no, nobody, nobody's had a chance to really uh, nail it. So it's like a family I, style dinner. Yeah, yeah, it's a potluck, the potluck <laughs> tray. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking like a convenience store in like downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, like those old banks. Yeah. Like put put your credit card in there and the bottle of water that you want. <laughs> You're like, geez, this is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> three inch plexiglass. Yeah. Mm. All right, I'm gonna say we jump in um, as people come in, just because, like I said, we have a lot. A lot to cover here. So if everybody's okay with it, Gina, do you uh, have your blessing to get started? Yes. Sweet. <laughs> go, go on. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Thank you, everybody who has started to show up here and more coming in for the Hypergraph Hour. I think this is number 33, which is a rather special and lucky number. So I'm happy it's my Hypergraph Hour. For those that don't know who I am, I'm Benjamin Diggles. I am the Chief Strategy Officer and Co-Founder at Constellation Network, which also just means I'm the Head of Business Development. And so today what we're covering is we're going to be going through the flight program update. Um, and this is something that we largely haven't been sharing a, a bunch on over the last year, largely out of the courtesy of keeping the projects anonymous because there is strategic unveilings on these companies. Um, that said, this really is kind of the, the beginning of a large journey for companies looking to get involved with Constellation. And those that have been following this know that this last year, um, we, we embarked on our very first version one of the flight program, which is now evolving into version two, which we'll be covering, that will be taking place in Q1 of next year. And so today we wanna to talk a little bit about and ground the opportunity as to why we're doing this. We really want this to sink in and be known in the industry as to why this is a strategic approach for Constellation Network. I'm gonna cover a little bit about flight program accelerator, accelerator one, um, what outcomes we saw, what learnings we have, and and then I'm going to turn it over to three companies that are going to give a quick uh, project showcase of their experience in the flight program. Not only that, but also what they're doing and why it matters to the world and why they chose Hypergraph uh, Transfer Protocol. 
Uh, then we're going to go ahead and pivot into what to expect, expect for the flight program accelerator version two. Um, and so as you can see, there's a list of faces below here. Not everybody's going to be presenting. There's only going to be three of us, Jorgensen, myself, and Tim O'Brien, though I did want to um, introduce Andrea, who uh, joined our team a few months back, um, is a seasoned crypto industry uh, person who is our director of ecosystem marketing. And the reason this is important is because we really are going to hammer home home during this presentation, the focus on quality over quantity, and having somebody like Andrea, who's going to be the director of how we really position these companies and, and get people excited about it, is, in my opinion, very mission critical to this entire program and our business. And of course, mo most folks know who Lyndon is. Um, he's our director of DeFi strategy. Uh, he plays a large role in this, but for the sake of time, we're just gonna keep it between myself, Mr. Jorgensen and Tim O'Brien. So to start off, I'm gonna actually hand it over to you, Mr. Jorgensen, to get us through the opportunity. And then after that, we can go ahead and pivot back to me to go over the V1 of the Flight Program Accelerator. Thanks, Siggles. Appreciate it. You know, you know it's fun, funny, every time we do these things, I, I always feel like it's scripted and everything's like organically put together and we've never talked, we don't talk like, at all before it and then it all just comes together really nicely so um how's everybody doing uh thank you i, I kind of wanted to set the stage um as i looked through this this presentation i wanted to kind of take a step back you can go to the next slide um Daniels, and and really kind of frame the why of why we did this um when we started the accelerator program we were getting an abundant uh, of people reaching out to us saying hey we want to build on constellation we didn't really know what they wanted to build. We didn't know the maturity. Um, we wanted to take inventory of who made up our, our community. Um, and so we got on this path um, early on on, on uh, creating a curriculum that would educate people on what it's like to become a cryptocurrency company. And in the spirit of open source uh, technology, we wanted that human inter interface uh, that, that, that replicates what you see in open source technology. We want to provide that, that same knowledge transfer uh, to businesses. Um, but it wasn't just like every other accelerator program. Our intention behind this was really to understand what type of demand we had to build on Constellation. Um, and we also, the, I think the biggest thing is we wanted to understand the different use cases use cases that were coming into our ecosystem. Who understood our technology and why our technology would open a whole new uh, book of business that uh, around different use cases that differentiated our ecosystem from everyone else. Um, we see a lot of accelerators going through this process and saying, uh, or other accelerators and other ecosystems um, trying to replicate what's already out there. And we want to take a bold step forward as we do with everything uh, around identifying use cases that really uh, expanded our technology in a different way than any other ecosystem. Um, and so I think that that framing kind of helped uh, present the why. Uh, next slide, Diggles. Which kind of opened up this huge opportunity for us to be educators. Um, and so one of the big initiatives that we have internally at Constellation uh, is that 2020 year, 2022 will be a year of educating people and opening that top of the funnel, educating people on how to access um, early stage projects before they hit Coinbase or Binance or major centralized exchanges, um, but also uh, educating people on how, or entrepreneurs on their next big step in, in their career, uh, in new opportunities and a new frontier as blockchain. And so we wanted to create an accelerator program that would help navigate people through a decentralized ecosystem. Um, working with a lot of the other ecosystems and things that we've seen is it's very tough to act, to really navigate some of these ecosystems. How do you get funding? How do you launch a token? How do you mint a token? How do you write a smart contract? Uh, how do you build a business? How do you attract a community? All things that we wanted to put under, uh, under this accelerator program um, as we started to tease out new products and solutions and services across, uh, across the Constellation ecosystem. Uh, and so kind of looking at these three pillars, uh, what I really want people to take away from this is that 
the accelerator and incubator was an easy way for us to educate people on the different thing, our technology and what we're building, the different products that we have, how to access uh, and communicate with our community, what expectations come with the cryptocurrency. And thus, we would actually mature various companies uh, to a point that they could start being an entrepreneur in the cryptocurrency industry um, while leveraging kind of uh, the different features that make up a cryptocurrency uh, platform. And then the goal was ultimately to graduate people into the Lattice Exchange, namely the Lattice Launchpad. So as we educate people on, on the accelerator, through the accelerator program, how to raise money, how to build a community, then they would reach a maturity level where they were ripe to go be listed on the launch pad. You've received some funding, you want a way to connect with our community. And ultimately we wanted our community to have a way that we were able to usher in quality projects, something that they could discover new projects um, and, and access them and know that they have that stamp of validation that came with uh, tried and true through vetting process from our DAO and from our core organization. And then ultimately those companies that, that raise money, launch a token, would naturally uh, migrate or uh, graduate into kind of lattice exchange and staking. Um, so we're starting to see some of this happen where you see ads token, where you can stake your ads tokens and receive uh, you know, rewards on top of that. Um, and ultimately the, the kind of game changer will come around next year where we add another layer to that, which is cross-chain liquidity. Uh, so this was kind of our, our structure and process that we wanted to migrate companies th through maturing themselves as a cryptocurrency company while also providing uh, a pathway for uh, crypto retail and our community to uh, access and discover new projects. Obviously, this wasn't just open to people in the Constellation community, but really anybody that wanted to build a cryptocurrency. So that was a little bit of a, a, on, our, on our process. Um, I'll hand it over to you now, Diggles. Thanks, Jorgensen. Not sure if you have anything you want to say on this slide, but I'm more than happy to, to dive in here a little bit. Um, you know, one of the big things that we discovered through this flight program version one was that we had all different sorts of maturity levels at the table, which made it a little tricky to navigate uh, just because, you know, you might have a question that's a little bit more mature from somebody or somebody that's just like, hey, where do I get started? Uh, and not to give our team a pat on the back. I think we actually did an amazing job at meeting those expectations of the different maturity levels. Uh, and it's not, not a profound pipeline management here. You got conceptual all the way to advanced. And we have some logos down there that kind of ground what this means. And, and really, if you look at the conceptual side, um, these are folks or individuals or teams that are you know, uh, interested in blockchain or crypto, but not really sure where to start. Um, and that's why we wanted to make this uh, first program uh, very foundational, right? But to, to that point, if you look at like Alchemy Exchange and Fan Token, two companies that you've heard from uh, and know well at this point, these are companies that uh, they know they've got something, they've got the team, they've got a lot down on paper, they have a, an idea ready, but they really wanted to, for lack of a better term, accelerate it, right? And I look at those two as very successful companies that came through at that sort of level. And then when you look at intermediate, you know, GeoJam, they already had an app out in the market that has, um, you know, is making money and does have users and has already a community around it. Um, and same when we learn a little bit about Jennyco here in a bit, um, already out in the market, already doing stuff, looking to add tokenization to their existing uh, business and really rethinking their business from the ground up to really support that. And then when you look at advanced, some of the stuff that we're doing with the DOD on productizing HGTP, as well as making data miners out of the door sensors through the acquisition we made this year, shows kind of the breadth of everywhere between a conceptual all the way to advanced. The reason this is important is that if you're out there watching this and you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I fit into this, the answer is you probably do, just based off of this slide alone. So Jorgen, I don't know if you have anything you want to add to this or we should move on. Keep Sounds moving like through moving. it. I'll chime in later through it. Yeah. Um, so to that point, I'm going to go ahead and just dive into some of the things we learned with the first uh, accelerator. And really, I wanted to reshare this slide to show the curriculum and the progression of the 12-week program to highlight that the focus was around building a defendable 
uh, white paper, right? One that includes really three major sections, one around section of building a blockchain business and a roadmap, understanding the technology. The second section really around your token economics and your um, economic model of using cryptocurrency within your business. And then the third section being really around fundraising, go to market and community building. How do you really launch this, right? And the goal is at the end that these companies would have something that they feel very proud of that gets them to the next level. And while we feel like this is very foundational and it was a great uh, V1, we're really excited to move into V2. But more on V1, some of the big things we learned was that, you know, as Ben mentioned, we're an on-ramp for newer existing projects that are looking to transform their business sectors or create new proposition under Web 3.0. We want to be the welcome mat for this new paradigm that's taking place in the Web 3.0 industry. As you all know, 77 companies applied, which we were very thrilled about. And we narrowed that down to 35 companies that attended. <clears throat> and I wanted to say that this cohort really showed up. Folks, <clears throat> they came ready. They put in the work. Um, I didn't see drop off all the way to the end, which was something I was concerned about to show that the, the program was very sticky and people were engaged. <clears throat> and as you'll see here, there's a, a myriad of different industry categories, all the way from healthcare to you know, gaming and data, drone tech, um, NFTs, music. Uh, but one of the things we're seeing uh, a little bit more of an emphasis on is data exchanges and data marketplaces. You know, if you think about HGTP and us having kind of the blockchain for data network, um, this makes sense why a lot of folks are looking to unlock or create new channels of monetization around data and data protection and data security. Um, and as we mentioned, there was a vast spectrum of maturity levels, but this didn't matter. But we do realize that not all projects are created equal. And there are certain things that, are, um, that we need to track outside of the program in itself that are things such as what are your capital requirements at different stages? And what are the macroeconomics and crypto conditions in, in the market right now that may play a role on the timing of when you want to either announce, mint, um, or start to evangelize your solution? We also learned that community is foundational, and this is not profound. We say it all the time. That's why we do these hypergraph hours. And as Ben's point, the reason we're good at these, this is our 33rd one, I think, in the last, uh, I don't know, year, maybe. I mean, this is where we've really started to get good at educating our community and being inclusive of our community because you are part of this, right? And it follows a very um, beautiful progression of getting the community involved, getting token subscribers, creating liquidity and value, and then moving on to a successful launch. And we've seen some of those proof points in the staking programs on the Lattice Launchpad this year. And we're becoming a quality source for quality projects. And that's something you're going to hear Benjamin Diggle say over and over is that quality over quantity. We want to really be known as that the projects that come into our ecosystem do have that quality stamp. And uh, through this, we realized that even exposing just a very few projects, it has grabbed attention. We watch the community be like, wow, I want to get in CyberLeap. I want to get involved in BioFi or I want to get involved in Fan Token." And we're excited to show three more of them today. Lattice Launchpad will continue uh, to be mission critical in 2022 and beyond, not profound there either. And that our scalable and feeless nature of hypergraph unlocks the promises of Web 3.0 and blockchain to business models that would otherwise not be viable. So pre be prepared to be surprised. And I mean that in a way that like, even though I'm, I feel like I'm right at the belly of the beast in this, every time I talk to a company that's looking to do something with our network, I'm like, wow. I hadn't even thought of that. It's brilliant. You know, there's just so much rich creativity coming out of our ecosystem. But why are we different? Uh, you know, Ben mentioned there's a few other ecosystems out there. And, and we do want to be an open source solution that works alongside other protocols, other ecosystems, and other applications. I don't believe in one protocol to rule them all. But we do have some major differentiators here. So we believe we've created a little bit of a different type of accelerator and that we've proven that we can successfully work with different projects at different maturity levels. Our goal also is to introduce different use cases than other blockchain ecosystems. We want to be known for those quality opportunities for all the stakeholders that want to get involved in any level of the maturity model. And we realize that companies are watching. We've attracted projects well beyond what we could have imagined and got involved. For us just kind of getting this thing going this year, I think 35 companies to come through the door 
and really take this serious was a big achievement for us, right? But with that, we've seen hundreds of, of people interested in companies since then that have reached out wanting to get involved in the next one. And we cross pollinate and we're collaborative. That's a really cool thing that we've watched happen out of this flight uh, program version one is we've seen companies get involved with each other, help each other understand, hey, when did you incorporate? What's the best legal people to use? Hey, can I, can I ask some questions on your token uh, economics model? Because we're kind of trying to figure out what our pre-sale is. And it's really great. Plus, there's also cross-pollinations on technologies. Like, wow, we can use your solution within our workflow. How do we integrate early so that we can have, you know, uh, one plus one equals three? So very proud of that piece. So I went through that rather quickly because I don't want to be too verbose on um, the version one. I feel like we've talked a lot about the value of that. We want to start to highlight a little bit about version two coming up here. But first things first, um, I'm going to hand it over to Michael Nova, who's going to talk a little bit about one of the projects that went through the program, his experience, and what to expect out of Jenny Co moving forward. So Michael, you're on, buddy. Great. Thank you. And, uh, nice uh, talking to everybody that's, uh, that's on the network. So, um, Jenny Co, we're, we're in the healthcare data business, basically, and, and um, I, I, in the past, had run a genetic testing company, and uh, we realized, uh, uh, my, my co-founder and I realized a while ago that the healthcare data component of what we're generating per user is very valuable. The healthcare data in general is some of the most valuable data imaginable, and every human in their lifetime generates terabytes worth of data. So it's a huge amount of information. Um, but then again, it's, it's difficult uh, because it comes from many different places and is unstructured in the, for the most part. It's difficult to make sense of it. It's difficult to make sense of it. And it's also, um, since it is so valuable, um, the individual user doesn't really have control over it. So Jenny Co basically was trying to put the user in charge of their own healthcare data and help them monetize it as well. So uh, everybody's got something, everybody, it doesn't matter your economic group, doesn't matter where you are, everybody's got some data, some healthcare data. And the goal for us was to put a system or service in place that helps you, the user, monetize it and then helps also take that data and have large corporations come in and be able to mine it and, and, and find, uh, uh, outcome benefits and, uh, and, and also to develop new products and to sell certain types of products based on this healthcare data, kind of a personalized solution. And every large company that you can imagine, whether it's Google or Nestle or food company, world's largest food company, they're all mining data. They're all very interested in personalization. So on one end of the, of the network, we have the user contributing this data who gets monetization out of it based on the token economics. It's one of the reasons we came to uh, the Constellation Group. And then on the other end, we have the large corporations that are mining this data. <clears throat> so putting this entire system in place, we, we absolutely had to have some sort of blockchain technology. And we were really interested in Constellation because a lot of the data that we get is layer zero, comes into layer zero. Constellation is HCQB is the only group that does that. It's faster than Ethereum. It runs on state channels. You know, it's got all these components that were perfect for us um, to, to kind of develop our service around. And, 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 and was one of the, the major reasons that we, that we basically chose Constellation. We got a lot out of the um, uh, accelerator program because we had, even though we had a lot of experience in healthcare and, and a very, very solid team, we needed you know, more experience we certainly didn't have experience around hypergraph. We needed more experience also around the token economics and tokenization. <clears throat> and so putting this all together, Constellation just had a really perfect team for us. Um, in, in, in the coming year, we're gonna be able to launch our, our, our tokenized platform. Uh, we'll be able to launch our service. Um, we have uh, you know, corporate partners that, that, that we're going after. So that's coming probably in, in, in the Q1 timeframe. Um, and then what we expect, um, you know, uh, is that, the, 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 that once the launch of the entire system and service gets, we will add obviously more components to it, maybe a subscription service. We're a business that's already in business and are generating revenue, fiat revenue. Um, but the only way for us to really be able to compensate the user was through a tokenized economy. Um, and then uh, finally, um, I think you can uh, get a little more information about us on our, on our Telegram channel and uh, the, 
the group of conservation has my email. You guys want to come and talk to me. I'm, I'm readily available all the time, except when I'm taking the kids to school in the morning. Forget that. Um, that's my, you know, probably my main job is dealing with children. So anyway, just really uh, happy to be here. And, uh, and we think the consolation, we think the world of the whole consolation team. <clears throat> You're a good man, Michael. I really appreciate that. Uh... And uh, thanks for sharing. Yeah, th to those that don't know, you can look up Michael Nova and see a little bit about who he is. Michael Nova, you can look up genomics, see his pedigree, um, the company that he uh, founded and is currently involved in and how he's evolving this into Genico. Um, but this is one of the projects to keep an eye on that uh, we're gonna be making some noise about starting in January because uh, we believe that this is going to be a game changer, not only for the blockchain and data industry, but really the DNA and healthcare data industry, which, uh, as I talked more to Michael over, the, uh, over this last year, I've learned is just an absolute myriad of all sorts of messes and data is right at the center of it. So this isn't just good for Constellation, the community, and Jennyco, but it's good for the world. So really appreciate that. Check them out at Jennyco Official on their Telegram to get involved and you're gonna be seeing more. So now we're gonna move on to the next one here. Uh, Mr. Christopher Greer, Greer, if you can go ahead and uh, kick it off, I will go ahead and move your slide. So you let me know um, All right. and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so uh, you can go to my first slide. Um, so uh, I'm going to kick it off. Uh, welcome to my announcement for Techware Solutions. Uh, my name is Christopher Greer. Uh, most of you guys know me as Prof151 Music in the community, um, like all over the chat rooms in there. And I tend to help out a lot in there. Um, so uh, you can go ahead and click to the next slide. Um, so a little bit of backstory about Techware. Uh, it's actually a suite of programs that I coded a long time ago, um, and they work. You know, I have a subscription service. Um, you know, I have a computer store where I sell it. Uh, people come in to get their computers fixed. They tend to sign up to my subscription program, and a lot of them never cancel. So <laughs> it's a proven system that actually works. Um, of course, the current version, it doesn't work with no cryptocurrency probably because it just wouldn't work on any other cryptocurrencies out there for the same reasons that everybody says, you know, Constellation is scalable, you know, super fast, you know, I couldn't do this like standing in line to make sure a transaction is going through is not going to work. Gas fees, I don't think any company can work on gas fees, right? But Constellation doesn't have any gas fees. So it actually makes this possible. So our goal with Techware is to revolutionize the computer services industry by creating technician tools that are efficient and interactive with clients. So I, like I said, I am a community guy. So my project, I want it to be very interactive with people, right? So, you know, there's gonna be a lot of ideas of rewarding token holders and things like that. So I'm gonna actually make cybersecurity fun in a way, even though cybersecurity can't be fun, right? <laughs> but we're gonna try. So let's go ahead and click on to the next slide. So the flight program, you know, uh, I guess this whole thing is about, you know, the flight program. And I do wanna say it was wonderful to go through the flight program. I loved it. Um, I learned a lot of really cool stuff. Um, Benjamin Diggles, Ben Jorgensen, Altif, Matias, even Wyatt was a part of this, you know, Linden, freaking all these guys are amazing. They all have their, their power, you know, in this. And I definitely, any business out there that, or somebody thinking of a business, you know, we're so early. There's so many ideas that people can do with Constellation that couldn't be done before. Dude, you guys just got to think about it. You, almost anybody can do it. I, I'm pretty positive if you put your minds to it. So we can go ahead and go on to the next slide. So 2022 is gonna be a big year for Constellation, right? Uh, Mainnet 2.0, like state channels are gonna go live, all this kind of stuff. So that's is when all the amazing stuff that everybody's been waiting for happens. And I want Techware to be at the forefront of that. You know, I wanna be side by side with Alchemy and GeoJam and token events and 
Jenny Co. Oh my gosh, that's going to be amazing, right? So um, yeah, so we're, I, I'm going to be opening up my community so you guys can actually join today. And soon we should be releasing the white paper, um, adding some finishing touches to it. Um, it's coming together very nicely and I've got a very good pod together and we're we're doing a lot of really cool stuff. Soon after that, it'll probably be the private cell and Lattice Launchpad, of course, because I'm launching on a hypergraph, I have to do Lattice Launchpad because that's gonna be the most, most amazing launchpad there is. Um, um, then we'll start developing. You know, I will we'll hire developers to help out with it and all these things to make version 2.0 of this, this suite that I created, you know, build it from the ground up with uh, the hypergraph as the main focus of making this an amazing project. So basically my, my program is a computer maintenance tool, right? So there's going to be a portal that computer technicians can help run their store or maybe they're a computer technician that works from home. They'll have this portal, they'll have all these tools that they'll be able to utilize to maintain their clients' computers and have that interaction with their clients to be able to help their clients out and things like that. Um, my main part of my first roadmap is going to be my cybersecurity programs. So Techware, under, un, Techware Uninfector is my virus cleanup tool that already works, like I said. Um, and I have my Techware AI program the Techware AI program um, is like any other antivirus programming, has real-time protection and things like that in it. Um, what's going to make these a lot different than regular antivirus tools and things is, I'm sure everybody's seen that pop up on your computer from your antivirus that'll be like, hey, uh, you have this file on your computer, could you submit it to us for so we can analyze it? And, um, make sure if it's a good file or a bad file that should not be on the computer. That's where the hypergraph is gonna come into play. And when people submit that virus file or whatever, it's going to securely be wrapped up and sent to our storage somewhere where we can analyze those files. And people will get rewarded for that because I think that's kind of a huge downside to the way antiviruses work today. They just want you to help them for free. And it, they could have the best antivirus program in the world, but if they don't have people that are submitting this data to them to build their database, then their antivirus is worthless, right? So I want to be rewarding the people that are actually helping me with that. So that's going to be a big deal with all of this, with any tools that run through my portal, it, it's going to have to do things like that. You know, it's got to be useful to everybody. Um, and a really cool thing is how my Techware antivirus database is going to work. Um, it's actually going to be searchable online. So like if you have a process running on your computer, some weird process called benjorgensen.exe and you don't know what it is, you'll be able to go to Google and type that in and Google will pull it up, you know, and, and you'll be able to go to my website and see if this is a good file or a bad file. You know, if it's a bad file, it's gonna list out the viruses it's attached to and you can click on it and it'll actually give you all the instructions how to remove that virus from your computer manually if you wanted to, or it will forward you to download my software. So it's basically going to have a way to advertise itself and then who knows if this all works out, which I'm pretty sure it will. Um, I'm hoping to be able to partner with a lot of big antivirus programs. You know, blockchain is, blockchain is the next evolution and Constellation is 10 years ahead of everybody else. You know, I'm sure a lot of these antivirus programs will want some sort of database like this. And I probably potentially could partner with a lot of them. So that's a little bit of background on that. Um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. So please join my Telegram. It's at Techware. Um, go in there, join in. You know, like, like I said, I'm a community person. So I, I want to interact with you guys. If you guys have ideas, things like that, bring them up. You know, I, I'm right now 
finishing out my white paper. Maybe one of you guys have an idea I haven't even thought of and we can fit that in the white paper or something, you know? Um, but I, I love you guys, Constellation. Let's do this. Let's make things happen. All right. You rock, buddy. I think tokenizing antivirus detection is absolutely brilliant. <clears throat> and this is an example of one of those companies that I get on the phone with and they tell me the idea is like, wow, that I, did, I hadn't even thought about something like that. Not that I should be thinking of everything, but this is really, really amazing. It gives me confidence that I can go surf the weirdest stuff on the internet and make money. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's not necessarily true. I appreciate you, Christopher. Thanks for being here Thank and you. thanks for participating. All right, so- and Chris, thanks um, for- uh... Thanks for using me as the example. I feel like I'm going to be protected by your <laughs> software. So, thank you. Yeah. All right, Mike, Mike. Okay, so this is a, Mike came um, into my inbox a while ago, beginning of this year. We had an introductory call and he's like, hey, I, I've got like seven years of passion dumped into this. He's got patents. He knows this subject matter honestly better than anyone I've met. And I've met a lot of people in the drone space. And he's like, yeah, I just, I really, I've got all this data. I've got this idea. What do you think I should do? And I said, you're a perfect fit for the flight program. So we were re really lucky to have Mike join us. So Mike, I'm going to hand it over to you. Um, and you've got, uh, you got some time to go through your slides. Wonderful. <clears throat> well, thank you very much, Benjamin. And the Constellation team is just, you know, such a blessing in my life because this was the piece that we really needed to move this forward. Uh, Drone Industry Systems Corp was, was based on an idea. <clears throat> that idea was looking at the current infrastructure for drone delivery. And we were looking at saying, okay, right now we're seeing seven years ago, they're coming up with these concepts of, okay, what if we could do drone delivery and drop a package off in the grass? So I started looking at that going, well, it's kind of, you know, what about all the elements? You know, what about rain, sleet, snow? How are we going to control this? Who's going to watch it? All these monitoring issues and security issues. So I started looking into saying, okay, I think what we need to do is create a structure. And that structure needs to somehow already be layered into an ecosystem that exists. It's pre-existing. So that way it can easily transition into the next generation of aviation. And if you can go ahead and switch the next slide. And then one more, there we go. So we had created a 156 page, 56 slide um, illustration of a patent that we filed in early 2019 that showed an example of an ecosystem here. And there's several patents that will connect to this that we filed. Um, this ecosystem is, is an example of taking an existing strip mall and you could take the top of it and using this example, it would be, let's say a 15,000 square foot strip mall, 14 foot high with a three foot parapet wall. And if you notice, you can have drone hangers, drone, drone stations, charging stations. You can have a defibrillator drone dedicated for any kind of emergency from a dispatch, or you can have first responder drones up there. They can be treated like parking spaces and you can use them, for example, if you were sitting there saying, well, I'm CNN, I'm, I'm Fox News, I'd like to have my own parking space up there. So one of the first steps in repurposing was we decided to repurpose the rooftops, taking pre-existing infrastructure where the brick and mortar was not a huge investment to get into, that we would take the current existing roofs and, and floors and, and you know, the grounds and, and put it all together into what we call the vertiport in a box solution. So this is an autonomous ecosystem that takes an, an open platform view of things where it's agnostic in both the sense of hardware and software. So this does not alienate anybody that comes up with a new drone or, or new landing pad, a new charging station, new meteorology equipment or sensor. We're able to take all that information and we can integrate it into the network, which is the node-centric mesh network that we're working on. This creates the backbone. And if you can see, this creates also an opportunity for taking somebody who is an owner of the property and once having worthless rooftop expenses and maintenance and turning it into a new rental opportunity. So we are actually enhancing the value of somebody's property but we're also making national airspace safer because every time we introduce a rooftop into the national airspace, we are actually making one more less location to worry about 
as you go inland from standard airports. So let's say that there's a data loss link or God forbid something happens where you have some kind of spoofing or, or whatnot. And this is where the blockchain um, comes in. This is where Constellation comes in. This is such an amazing concept to put together because what you wind up having now is we can do blockchain validation to the source of the block, where it came from, where what was the genesis of that data. We can start to actually pay attention to where this data came from. We can then vault that data and, and use a forensic examination in the future if there was any type of nefarious situation. But why does it make national airspace safer as well? Well, it's because when that data loss link does occur, if it does occur, each time you add a rooftop, you actually make national airspace safer because it's closer. But also as the supply chain logistics happens to add more rooftops and ground stations, you are now also making what we call the true last mile logistics. So we are able to take an open platform, make it agnostic, scalable, modular, and allow for other third-party companies to put in the sensor data. But this also adds one more feature that is really important in the aviation sector for safety and security. When you look at an airport, most airport uh, sensors are such as AWOSs and ASOSs. They're very expensive. They can cost up to a quarter million dollars. They're only affordable for airports. So you might have one airport and another airport, waypoint A and waypoint B. And in between, there's no actual data. We call that data desert or data gaps. And those data gaps need to have some fill-in because if you're going to do beyond visual line of sight, for autonomous cars and autonomous drones, which you can see right there that you can actually pull up if it was an autonomous car, you're gonna need enough sensors to actually start providing weather data. And so one of the exchanges we are gonna be doing under this is the weather data exchange. Because every sensor that we daisy chain together, we are now filling in those data gaps in between the two airports. Also, when you do any kind of drone flight, the rules for the FAA are starting to go from surface level to 400 feet. So if you think about it, you have these data gaps now from surface level to 400 feet because satellites don't have that quality to go down past up to 3000 feet. And then you have the space between the airports. So every time we add an airport, we are now adding a daisy chain of data for the actual logistics side of it, but also for the weather distribution of data. Hey, Mike, I just, just sorry to throw off your flow. You've got about three and a half minutes. I just wanted to give you a time cop. Thank you very much. Uh, next slide. So here's an example of, of, of a system. You have a, a departure drone and a, an in-route drone and an arrival drone. That departure drone might be told by the in-route drone that they just sensed an, a, a weather anomaly like lightning. It'll tell the departure drone, you don't have to take uh, stay. You don't have to ground yourself. Go ahead and go around this IMC bad weather swath and go ahead to your arrival destination. So you can use IML, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and combine the sensors and data. Next slide. So these are what we call our, our logistic infrastructure, low hanging fruit and different vertical markets of our branding products. This is something that you, know, you can see on our website whenever you get a chance. Next slide. The smart delivery drone app is something we, we're currently working on. It will allow us to first deal with um, manual transportation of vehicles for delivery, but we're also going to be providing, you know, and metadata is going to be coming through there, but we're also going to be providing the next generation for autonomous vehicles and autonomous drones that will be part of the delivery process. Next slide. So what, it, what has transpired from that is the AMX, which is the Autonomous Mobility Data Exchange and DISC. We're going to utilize the, the tokenomics uh, that we have learned from using the 12-week the program of Constellation. And we have taken the time to mesh that into this system so that way all those separate brand identities of vertical markets allow us with that open platform to bring in industry leaders in this sector and allow us to actually cross pollinate their data between each other. And now we can actually start to see the chain of custody of events, see where the data derive from and make it a national airspace safer. Next slide. So right now, these are the vertical markets that we're creating under the sub exchanges of, of the autonomous exchange. 
These are the different datas that you'll be able to go to. We call this a true data exchange for ourselves because what, what we're gonna be doing is allowing you to queue up the data, the data suppliers and the data uh, retrievers. So in essence, this whole turnkey system makes us an integrator, an aggregator, a, a, a blockchain validator, and a market maker. Next. And these are the patents that we filed and trademarks over the years. There's still a few more that are not on there, but um, that relate to what we're discussing. Next. And that's it. Uh, I want to truly, from the bottom of my heart, thank this crew is just, uh, this crew is amazing. Constellation Network really, they don't just say they're going to do something. They, they created a program that for anybody who has, you know, an idea, a concept, and, and the wherewithal to want to go after those goals and achieve them they are truly the best technology out there and the support is amazing so my, my kudos to them and thank you for all you've done if you want to reach out to us you can do so on the uh if you could see the the telegram right there you can reach out to me at drone industry systems thank you very much Fantastic, Mike. Sorry to rush you along. I know you're passionate and you know so much about this topic that you could talk for hours. <clears throat> I've certainly learned a ton uh, just in the meetings that we've had together. Um, so those that are interested, please do uh, go check out that Telegram channel in uh, Drone Industry Systems. Start talking with Mike, pick his brain. Um, I'm sure he would love to hear from you. And uh, if we zoom out, we just heard from a company looking to tokenize DNA data a company looking to tokenize antivirus data and a company looking to tokenize drone data, which each of them are packed with a bunch of different use cases in which that data can provide. And so we were very lucky to attract companies of this caliber to go through our first flight program. And uh, it was really fun to, to hear everybody present. So uh, big props to everybody. All right, we're gonna move on. And I think Tim O'Brien, if you're on the phone, I wanna hear you talk a little bit this because you're gonna be involved in spearheading this next uh, accelerator. Uh, I've had the honor of working with Tim for a few months, though he has been part of our ecosystem, I think for over the last year. So he's been in, in our channels for, uh, uh, for a while. And not only does he know a ton about business development, he understands crypto. You may have heard of Node.Army. If you haven't heard of Node.Army, he probably is rolling his eyes because he always doesn't want to get that plug. But I couldn't be more proud of you, Tim, for putting that up. Check out Node.Army. You know that comes from Tim. And it shows that he has a passion for this space. So Tim, I think what I would love to do is, um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll lead this side and then if you want to talk to the next one, or if maybe you wanted to share on this one, I can go ahead and kick this off and then I'll open it up to you. Um, this is one of this graphic actually has been a work in process that has come from Constellation Core that to my knowledge was just finalized last night, even though I've been working with different renditions up to this point um, and nothing's ever really finalized really. Um, so there's that. What I love about this just shows how all these things work together and how DAG and Lattice really are the foundational power of this ecosystem. And, um, you know, I think that what this really does play into uh, people's minds is that we have a breadth and a plan that really is full circle. And so the flight program, as you can see down there, um, that little rocket ship is really the entry point to a lot of this. And, you know, one of the questions I heard I saw in the Q&A during uh, the time that the speakers were talking was, um, you know, what disqualifies a company? And we're at a point now that there really isn't a disqualification. Say you do fill out the form and maybe you don't have the right makeup that makes it into the program. And what I mean by the right makeup is we look at things like, do you have the pedigree or do you have the team that has the expertise in the industry you're trying to revolutionize, right? If you want to take on municipal bonds, but you've never worked in that industry, our uh, risk assessment would be that you're probably a little too risky to take on something of that magnitude if you don't already have some history with it. So those are the types of things that we look at to ensure that we have the best quality in the group. That said, we're looking to this next quarter as we launch the V2, we're gonna start sending people to the playlist of V1. Hey, if you're not really sure where to start, hey, take the course that these companies took so that you can write a white paper and get ready for maybe the next cohort. So we don't wanna leave anybody out in, in the cold there. So um, Jorgensen, I don't know if you have anything you wanna say on this slide or if we can go ahead and uh, move on because I feel like we've really talked through the flow quite a bit here. Go for it, thank you though. Okay, cool. Tim, maybe you can talk a little bit about the curriculum focus moving forward here. Absolutely, and uh, I hope the video is working. Uh, I've always had a great uh, face for radio, and here we are uh, on, a, on, a, on a video. Um, so look, um, 
constellation is revolutionary. There is no point now having version two of the accelerator being revolutionary. It is all about evolutionary now. Uh, we've got a, a great um, a great base from, from V1. So we're looking to be additive. We're additive rather than revolutionary. There are a few things that we know that uh, we can we can add and add immense value to the projects as they continue to, to flow through the ecosystem. Uh, we're learning more and more about token event execution, and we're, 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 we're making sure that we um, relate back to the projects that have been through uh, the ecosystem already. Uh, and we're talking to all of the ecosystem partners that we work with, whether it's um, whether it's listing listing uh, advisors that we've worked with uh, over on Uniswap, whether it's um, uh, liquidity providers, market makers. We're bringing all of their insight uh, to make sure that we can improve the token events for all of our projects. Programmatic excellence is going through everything that we do. Um, looking at healthy cap tables, making sure that we have the appropriate vesting schedules, lockups, and wallet dispersals. We've learned, of course, over time, as many of you will know, that uh, to, to progress to other uh, potentially centralized exchanges, you has, have to have a, a, a wide dispersal of wallets. So we're looking at that as part of our ecosystem growth. Many of our projects, um, They've come to us for, from different levels of maturity, as, as Diggles mentioned earlier on. And we want to be all uh, an accelerator for all areas of, uh, of, of maturity, all levels of maturity. Because if we've got a really good project, it doesn't matter that it, it was on the back of a beer mat last week. If it's compelling, we will help them get through to a token event and to launch a really revolutionary business on the hypergraph. So some of those businesses will need seed funding. They won't all be able to bootstrap themselves. So we're going to be talking with early stage funders and bringing them into the ecosystem earlier on. Together with that, we're also looking at minimizing the cost uh, of, of running a project through two token events. So we're working with partners, whether those are, and we'll, we'll talk to, to some of them in the next slide, whether those are legal advisors, marketing advisors, um, cloud computing data, uh, sorry, cloud computing infrastructure providers and so on. Um, by doing that, we're also going to create a much greater exposure to the projects at the earlier stage for some of the partners that they're going to need to work with uh, at later stages of their development once they've sort of um, been let off the reins, as it were, and they're out in the wild. Uh, we're also looking at corporatizing a little bit. Uh, what do we mean by that? I mean, we've got fantastic tokenomics, white paper, marketing, but sometimes some companies, some projects need to have uh, an incorporated company. They need to sort out their intellectual property ownership. They need to trademark. They need to do all of this clunky stuff that um, an entrepreneurial business might not often want to do, but we still need to give them that that plumbing, the raw plumbing to, to, a, to a, a business process. So we're going to give that to them as well. Um, and as Diggles uh, mentioned earlier on, it's also about navigating the, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, the macroeconomic cycles that, that all businesses face, but you're, you're most vulnerable when you're going through your uh, preparation to a token event and then you've just got early liquidity. That's when you're most uh, vulnerable. So if we can help our projects navigate and, and mitigate those risks, then we're gonna get them in a much better position for the broader ecosystem. Okay, can we move on to the next one, Gina? Yeah, yeah, and I'm going to share this one with you. Um, oh, wait, did somebody have something to say? No, no, go ahead, Tim. Cool. Oh, yeah, I was just going to share this one with you and just say, uh, state that one of the big things we're going to be doing is expanding a massive sponsor and speakers track in this next one. Um, we had some speakers in the last one. This one, we're opening up to sponsors. The reason we, we didn't want to share any names is because we're still in paperwork with a lot of them. Um, so for that case, that's why we're not sharing logos uh, just yet. But maybe, Tim, you can talk to why we're uh, bringing in some of these different groups to add value to the companies. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Douglas. And look, many of these... Uh buckets that you see in front of you now will, will come as no surprise. This is what the projects need. Um, and if we can uh, engage at an early stage, look, we can we can provide um, free resource, really. That's the ultimate thing. We're providing value to our projects, value to the ecosystem at no cost to the projects uh, and at little cost uh, in terms of choice, because we're only going to be going to best of breed. We're going to be going to best of breed cloud computing providers. Um, we're talking about Stardust tax. Whenever you're running a node, if you earn rewards, you pay a bit of Stardust tax. That goes into a, a community, for, um, for want of a better word, foundation wallet. We can then, as a community, then stake a number of nodes 
to create a state channel for some of our projects that they might need for six months. So they don't have to necessarily invest in DAG to be able to run their own state channel when they're in their earlier stage of proof of concept. So we can help doing that as a community. Um, corporate platform, if you figure that you've got SAFT, simple agreements for future tokens, for example, if you're in the pre-sale or all of the, um, uh, the white paper documentation that'll, that'll uh, encapture uh, a, a public sale, that can be pretty standard. So if we can work with a top tier law firm, and we are doing working with top tier crypto worldwide law firms, um, then we can um, template it, template it once and then use it for all of our projects. And same sort of thing with community and branding. There are processes. It's all about process. And if we can just follow the same process and work with the same uh, advisors to do that. Custodian services, liquidity, market making. There won't, there'll be names that, of course, you'll have heard. And um, we won't mention them just yet, but there'll be a couple of, that would trip off the tongue straight away when you think of custodian services. Um, and we're talking with them at a way of bringing them into the Constellation ecosystem um, to add value to the ecosystem. But the, 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 the sort of the candy we're giving them is early exposure to our projects, which of course will be highly valuable to them as, as enterprise businesses in the future. Early stage investors, if we can work with VCs, seed funders, um, and indeed the community yourselves, maybe a community investment club or something so we can invest in an early stage pre-token event, then we can de-risk some of the financials for our projects as they're going through. Um, business tools, treasury management, that's back up with custodian services. Data room, we're going to make sure that we, uh, we corporatize our projects offerings so that they can have a secure data room that, uh, that these parties um, can actually look into and have a look at. But we're always going to be relating back to academia to make sure that we get some of the really um, the, the really punchy projects that are coming out of, uh, of think tanks and of, and of academia, we want to grab those. We're going to be seeing if we can poach um, projects from other accelerators, other incubators. Um, if a project realizes that they need big data uh, and massive transaction flow, they're not going to be able to operate on ERC20. So we can talk to them and see if we can migrate them across into our ecosystem. And of course, finally, it's you, it's the community. I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit I, I was a community member. I then joined the Stardust Collective Business Pod. Then I did my own side hustle. And now I've become uh, part of the Constellation uh, team. And I'm absolutely delighted to do that. But I came out of the community. The community is what makes Constellation uh, work. It really is. Um, and with, I think the final slide, uh, Deagles, we're talking about how we can um, get people involved. People know about yeah. the project intake form. Um, I'll leave it. I'll leave it with you to round off. How about that? Yeah, yeah. I just, I mean, man, it was awesome hearing you talk, and it shows you the caliber of, who, of Tim, right? I, I wish I was British, so I sounded smart. Uh, it just, <laughs> you're amazing, buddy. And so we're really lucky to have you. Um, and as as Tim mentioned, you know, he came through the community, uh, did a project on his own, and now he's part of Constellation Core, and we couldn't be happier about it. Um, and yeah, so how to get involved is, is really kind of in the same way we've been doing it. Project intake page on our website. Applications are open and ongoing. Um, next round of qualifying will take place at the end of at, uh, January. We're going to be announcing our sponsors and speaker rollout in January as well. Um, we are going to be doing a similar capacity, but we decided to focus on the quality versus the number. Um, so even if it's a large uh, quantity of quality, we're going to figure out how to bolster that. One of the questions that came in from the community was around if this was mandatory or not to work with Constellation. The answer is no. This like The flight program is not a mandatory um, requirement in order to work with Constellation. We just see it as a way to get involved if you're a business that fits the mold of wanting to work with us in that capacity. But we are gonna be seeing more self-serve and more ways to just launch on Lattice Launchpad and opening this up once Mainnet 2.0 really starts to breathe and come to light and people understand how to build state channels. Um, so. Please, uh, I do encourage you if you are a company or an individual or, uh, or whatnot or know somebody that's interested, we would love to hear what you have uh, to offer by filling out this form. 
and uh, we are excited to get to work with you. I will say that uh, we're at the end of the hour and I'm actually pretty impressed that we got through all that with multiple speakers. Um, we showcased multiple companies. Um, and now that we're rounding out the year, I just wanna thank the community for a groundbreaking year. It was around this time last year, we were at one penny. Uh, now, you know, uh, we, we've, we've had a big spike this year and it's just been a wild ride. We've seen so much amazing stuff. We could spend two hours talking a year in review of all the things we accomplished. But I do wanna thank everybody that's been a part of this. Thank my friends. I've got my friends over at the book club. They know who they are, appreciate your support. And uh, my, my core team and the founders. So Jorgensen, I don't know if you want to take us home as the CEO and fearless leader. Yeah, you're funny, man. Thank you. This was awesome. Uh, Tim, great job on, on presenting. Welcome to the welcome to the team. And um, I, I think this is going to be a really fun year. Diggle's great presentation, all the projects that went through this. I got a chance to have one on ones with each of you. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how you guys all grow. Um, how you get involved with uh, the Lattice Launchpad. And um, it's going to be fun to see all these different use cases, you know, just to kind of highlight, this is, this is about educating people on how easy it is to build a, a, a cryptocurrency and invite new entrepreneurs and new use cases in our ecosystem uh, to be a powerhouse in the space. Um, so, I, you know, I think that the next logical uh, hypergraph hour needs to be um, kind of showcasing the lat uh, Lattice Exchange, what's going on, the team, um, a lot of the successes that we've had and what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, there's as a progression to what's uh, gone through in the Accelerator program. So you guys, thank you so much. And this community, thank you so much for an uh, amazing year. You always challenge us in new ways. And um, it's been a, a year for improving our communications with you and, and building a tighter bond. So it goes, it goes noticed. Awesome. All right, everybody, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, and we'll see you on the next Hypergraph Hour or in our uh, Telegram community channel. Have a great day. That's all. Bye.